Hey, my name is Mike, and in this video, I'll be showing you how to use Google AI Studio, a very powerful tool that I honestly wish I learned earlier, but I spent a lot of time using this, and I want to show you some of the incredible features that this really has in here. So this is essentially a juiced up version of Google Gemini, meaning it's not just a chatbot. It's not just something that you'd you know upload a document or a picture to and, and ask questions about. Instead, this is something that can really interact in real time with several different things, one being the ability for it to see what is on your screen so you can walk through different different things and ask questions as I'll demonstrate in a minute. Uh, the second thing would be the camera function. So on your phone, for example, uh, you could just hold it up and ask about different things that you're seeing. And of course, being that this is Google's AI studio, we can use it as a traditional chat bot as well, but really bring it to the next level with additional control. So there's a lot to talk about. And to be honest, the interface is definitely a little bit intimidating. So in this video, I'm going to start off on my desktop. Then we'll go over to my phone and I'll kind of show you what these things are, because honestly, this could really unlock a lot for you at work, at home, whatever you're doing. This could potentially automate a lot of stuff and, and ultimately just help you achieve more. So to get started here, you can go to AIstudio.google.com and then just sign in with your Google account. The interface, I'll, let's do a little walk through that, because like I said, it is a little bit intimidating. You'll see in the middle, you have, of course, your prompt right here. So you can type in anything you would normally ask, like ChatGPT or Gemini. Or you can click on prompt gallery and it'll show you, you know, some suggestions of what this might be able to do. On the right side, the plus button, you'll see that unlike something like ChatGPT, you're actually able to, uh, you know, put a YouTube video in here um, or any other sample media. So ChatGPT already works with like doc PDF documents and, you know, photos, but this can actually use videos as well. For example, you could copy and paste any video you want and say, summarize it or give me timestamps or something like that. And then across the top, we have several other features. I'll talk about those a little bit later, but something to note is that this does connect with Google Drive. So a lot of the work that you do in here can be saved on Google Drive and accessed more easily in the future. Going down the left side, this is where you see possibly some changes over time. This has changed in the past couple of months, but a lot of really powerful features here. So chat is the one that we're probably all fairly used to by now. But if we go down to stream, this is going to be live conversation with Gemini. So you can just talk to it and have that inter interaction. I think we've seen that before, uh, but we also have webcam and screen share. So I'm going to start off with screen share and uh, I'm just going to go over on the right side, make sure we're Gemini 2.0 looks good. If there's anything newer, potentially you want to try that as well. We have some settings. We could choose the voice. We could choose, um, you know, the resolution of different things, but I'm just going to say screen share and I want to go with, I want to go with this window right here. The one that I'm using right now, say share. Now I'm going to stop recording so I can explain what I'm about to do. So in this other tab here, I have two things open. I've got a spreadsheet and I have maybe a presentation. So if I'm building this presentation and I have some questions about how to do things, I could simply ask Gemini and Gemini is able to see everything that's on my screen right now. So keep that in mind. Maybe don't use this for banking or uh, any really personal information because I didn't read the terms of service. Google's probably using this to train their, their model. Uh, that's why it's free. But all things considered, if you're doing something like Google Sheets and Google Slides, it's already Google. So that makes perfect sense to me. But anyway, let's talk about let's let's say I want to animate something. Let's turn this back on. Hey, I want to make this title uh, a bold font. How would I do that? To make the title text bold, you would first select the text box containing the title, then click the B icon in the toolbar at the top of the screen. Is there anything else I can help you with? Yeah, I want to make this animated. Like, can I make it spiral in when I start presenting this? To make the title spiral in when you start presenting, you would need to use the transition feature. Have you used that before? No, how do I do that? To use the transition feature, first click on the transition option in the toolbar. Then, on the right side of the screen, you should see the transitions panel. In that panel, you can choose the slide. Wait, where, where is the trans? Where is that? My apologies. It looks like the transition button is actually located to the right of theme on the toolbar. Do you see it now? No. Okay. I see that the transition button is not visible in the toolbar. In that case, click on slide in the menu and then select transition. From there, the transitions menu should appear on the right hand side of the screen. Okay, it's there. Do you want to animate the entrance of the entire slide? No, just the word sloths. Under object animations, select the title sloths, then click add animation. Does that make sense? Yep. So now how do I make it spiral? Instead of up here, you can select the drop down menu to see other options like hmm. fly in, zoom in, or spin. Is one of those what you're looking for? Yes. 
I see you have selected the spin animation. Would you like to try testing it by selecting the play button at the bottom? All right, so you can see right there that it was not perfect. It didn't know everything. Sometimes it would recommend me to click certain things that just aren't on the screen. But if you tell it like, no, I don't see it, it'll look at your screen. It'll say, all right, actually you have to click on this and then click on that. So it's not perfect yet. But if you're trying to walk through something, it is kind of a nice co-pilot uh, just to work with you and start doing stuff. So that's an easier one, right? Animations on on uh, you know Google Slides, for example. But let's say instead I was going to use Adobe Premiere Pro, and I wanted I had some questions about that. Let's let's try that out. So I can select my window. I'll say share. Make sure my microphone's on. Hey, so I accidentally messed up my interface here. I'm new to Premiere Pro, and I want to just reset this so that the interface, like the layout, looks the way it did when I first started that. How do I do that? To reset the layout of Adobe Premiere Pro to its original state. You can go to Window in the top menu, then select Workspaces, and finally choose Reset to Save Layout. Would you like me to repeat these steps? No, that was great. Now, how do I import media? To import media, you can either drag and drop files into the project panel, or you can click the Import Media... Which one's the project panel? The project panel is the one labeled Project Test Project in the bottom left corner. It looks like you already have it open. It, is, my, is my mouse hovering over it right now? Gotcha. Now, do you want to select the import media button or drag and drop the file? Wait, is my mouse hovering over it? Yes or no? Oh, I apologize. It looks like your mouse is at the top of the screen near the metadata button. Do you want to select the- Okay, what about now? Now is my mouse hovering over it? Yes, I can see it now. It's hovering over the import media button. Would you like to click it? All right, so again, that was- fairly successful. I have to say that using this in a, like a newer program that you're, you're kind of just getting used to could be kind of helpful, especially something like Adobe Premiere Pro where there's, you know, it's a really complicated interface and there's a lot that goes on there. Sometimes it takes a while to go and like find out what you should even search to ask the right question on Google or on YouTube to fix things like that. So I think that's pretty impressive. Otherwise, let's go back to on the left side. We'll talk about stream more on mobile where you can actually use your camera. Here you could use the webcam. I think it's better on your phone though, of course. Then we have video gen going down. This one's pretty straightforward. You could just ask it to, let's say, make a video. And of course, on the right side, we have some customization. You could change the aspect ratio, how many results you're getting, the duration of the video, the resolution and frame rate. And you can change a lot of, and also have a negative prompt as well. So just additional controls you get with Google AI Studio. And that's the same thing for chat as we'll go back to in a minute. Uh, you can see all the parameters for how creative you want it to be and different things like that. Like I said, we'll talk about that in a sec. All right, so let's check out this video that's uh yeah that's pretty much what i was asking for so what we can do now is as i mentioned this links up with google drive this is google gemini so it makes sense if i click on export to drive it'll add it to my google drive and uh, i can use that in the future very easily it's great if i want to so let's say view and drive there we go so it's great if i'm working on a project with other people and i want to share these things uh, maybe video editing for example i could really do that quite easily there then below that we have starter apps so google ai studio i would say probably started off being more used by people trying to develop apps so kind of using it in a co-pilot in that sense and so there are some kind of little demo apps you can get started with and and some of these are quite impressive so you can just click on them they're like a template and you can adjust them from there uh, or you can make your own apps you could say create app up there uh, what kind of ch template do you want to start with and I think that's a topic for another day really diving into that so uh, let's go back to chat and before we go to mobile and I show you the very impressive feature there I want to talk about what is on the right side so as I mentioned this is like a juiced up version of Gemini uh, the interface gives us so much more control so we can choose what model we're using which is pretty typical um, but below that you can have your token count you can kind of customize that so this is free to use as long as you're not like doing massive projects with a million tokens more than a million tokens um, but anyway you can see on the right side you can track your tokens as you do stuff the temperature is going to be essentially how creative it is so you can make it more or less creative with the responses and we have tools here if we want to edit like a structured output have any kind of uh, code execution or down here if you want to have any safety settings for censorship and stuff like that so just some things output length as well if you want to limit that by the way so just some things you should know uh, and as I mentioned if you want to upload files you can have it read you know large documents or have audio inputs and different things uh, that might be useful so let's go over to mobile now all right so on mobile you can just go to your browser Google Chrome or whatever and go to aistudio.google.com again and from here it should look similar to your desktop but if we go on the left side to stream as we were before it'll bring us into kind of a slightly different look here we can tap on webcam and this is going to be our actual like phone camera obviously not a webcam here 
So I'll say allow this time talk. We want to allow this as well. Maybe on the back uh, of this, this little box right here, I don't understand what these icons mean. So before we get into those, could you tell me how many watts is this charger rated for? I can help with that based on the image. The charger is rated for 2.5 to 10 watts. Would you like me to explain the meaning of the icons as well? Yes. Like, what is the one that looks like, uh, I don't know, it's like right above the UK one. I see it. That looks like the Mobius loop, which is a symbol indicating that the packaging is recyclable. Is there another icon you'd like me to identify? Yeah, what about the one uh, on the top left? On the top left, the icon with CCAK indicates that the product complies with communication equipment regulations in South Korea. Anything else I can help identify? What about that triangle with the MC, MC, what does that mean? That icon of the triangle with the MCMC indicates that the product complies with the standards set by the Malaysian Communications and Multimedia Commission. Does this use Bluetooth? Yes. This device uses Bluetooth 5.4. Does this Would use like Wi-Fi? I can confirm that the box indicates that these are Wi-Fi wireless earphones. Okay, so how does that work? The Xiaomi Buds 5 Pro are Wi-Fi enabled, meaning they can connect directly to a Wi-Fi network. Is there something specific you would like to know about how that works? All right, so I have another prompt I want to do. Let's go over from the Google AI Studio again, go down to stream, then we'll tap on webcam. We'll allow it. We'll go to talk. We'll allow that as well. Hey, so I have some ingredients right here. I want to make like, I don't know, something for dinner. Uh, what, what could I make out of this? I know it's not a lot of ingredients, but could you give me some ideas? Based on the ingredients shown in the video, you could make a snack plate with crackers, sardines, cashews, and dates. Does that sound good? Could you give me some other ideas? Certainly. You could try stuffing the dates with cashews and topping them with a sardine for a sweet and savory bite. Would you consider that? No, that sounds pretty bad. Okay, given that, would you like some other ideas for dishes that don't combine the sardines and dates? Yes, please. Got it. How about a Mediterranean-inspired cracker plate? You could top the crackers with sardines and a sprinkle of chili oil, then serve dates and cashews as a side to balance the savory flavors. Does this sound like something you'd be interested in? All right, so that was uh, pretty impressive. I didn't give it a lot to work with here, and a charcuterie board kind of was probably the best thing you could make out of these. Anything else would be pretty disgusting. Just sardines mixed with, I don't know. Anyway, so yeah, the point is that it's able to recognize everything I had on the table here and it was giving me some suggestions. So if you just point this at your pantry or your refrigerator, um, it could be a good way to get some new ideas of what you might be able to, to make with that. And similarly, you could point this at other things when you're outside and say, like, what is this building? You could ask it questions about a plant and say, how do I take care of this plant? Uh, and ultimately when you're done, you can export all of this over to Google Drive. So you're able to access it again in the future if you're trying to work on a project, you wanna remember stuff, or if you just like having that answer, you can access it again in the future. So. That is a quick crash course on how to use Google AI Studio. Like I said, it's a very powerful tool and there's a lot you can do both on mobile and on desktop. Because it is connected to your Google account, you can access it from anywhere and kind of get everything that you made. And you can therefore access all of that information from any device, with, whether you're starting a project on your laptop and finishing on your phone, it's all gonna be connected. So leave a comment down below and let me know how you would be using this. Honestly, I'm interested to see like what applications you have for this. If you enjoyed the video, consider liking and subscribing. I'm Michael Bryan from Sanfrel Media. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.